Hello and welcome back to An Abundance of Not. I'm your host, Garrett, joined this week by Wade. Hello. And Brad. Hello. Again. I'm back. Finally, he's back. I am back. We many much missed him. Well, thank you. I missed you guys. Liar. I didn't even think about you. I, that's more accurate. <laughs> too busy moving boxes for him to think. Ah, uh, it's been a busy couple weeks, but we will get into that. We will, we will. Um, yeah, a lot to talk about, I'm sure, this week on different factors. I've, um, well, I, I've reluctantly heeded Brad's advice on finishing up some of my crafts. <laughs> And After being have, publicly shamed. have ordered quadcopter stuff. I have a battery and power system showing up hopefully this week. It's currently in transit. And then I have to buy the flight controller, battery charger, and uh, some replacement props to have as backup. And hopefully it'll be airborne. Your, uh, your financial institution thanks you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bank of America is loving me right now. Woohoo! Especially when my bank account shows overdrawn. No, just kidding. It doesn't show that. <laughs> good, good. That's not a good place to be. Nope. Nope. I uh, As much as I want to order the brain now, I am um, curbing my impulsiveness enthusiasm? Oh. Uh, and enthusiasm just to see how things play out before I pull that trigger. But it's coming along. Awesome. So, more updates as things progress. Uh, let's see. What else? We went to a wedding on Sunday. We did. Uh, we went shopping and otherwise nothing else on Saturday. Right? Ran around a little bit. But that was... You guys did. I was like, you asked me, like, do you want to go here? I'm like, nope. Don't need well, to. Well, that was Target on Sunday morning. But Saturday you were with us as we... Got wedding gift and otherwise went to the mall and whatnot. All right. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, a fairly calm weekend uh, with those things considered. You want to... Do we need to go into the wedding at all? It was... It was a nice wedding. I mean, it it took its time getting going. And well, it was out at... We got thing. there really early. The wedding was supposed to start at four. Well, I mean, after that, when you're like, okay, sit down. Then you're like, okay, it's been like half an hour. What's going on? Yeah, some of the people who were <laughs> yeah, making yeah. toast decided to go a little long, oh, which happens. I was, uh, was going to say, you ask person one, do you? Oh, they no, say, I'm I do. It. You ask person two, do you? You say you are. No, that part Oof. went the the ceremony up front went pretty quick. Um, okay. The Does I suppose minister, I believe that's the <laughs> appropriate turn. I mean, I didn't see his credentials, so I mean, <laughs> I suppose he was a minister. He was awesome actually pretty good. Um, He's also he, available for bar mitzvahs. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty good. He was funny at times else. without trying to steal the show, which was nice, and he wasn't. It wasn't at a church, so it wasn't overly preachy or anything like that, which was nice. But after the wedding uh, primary ceremony, the um, you know families went off to do their pictures, and that took half an hour or so. And then we went out to the seating area, and it probably took... I mean, it took quite a while for us to finally get seated oh, yeah. um, for dinner and reception. And then toast happened. So that was uh, chaotic. <laughs> but I had the daughter for the wedding, and I had to get her home at a reasonable time. She's actually at an overnight camp this week, so I haven't seen her since Sunday. Wow. Um, yeah, big girl stuff. Nice. Um, but yeah, I came back to the, the reception, and people were having a good time. And I mean, I suppose that sums it up. Um, it was a nice little venue. It was overlooking... Uh, San Clemente Pier. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually an old, um, it was a house, former house that was, belonged to, I the guess, founder. the guy that founded San Clemente, yep. the city. Uh, and it's now called Casa Romantica. So, all in the all, not bad. House. What's that? I said the romantic, romantic house, right? That's correct. You awesome. know your Espanol. 
<laughs> very, yes. very little. Yep. <laughs> what about you? What about me? Well, speaking of big girl stuff. Let's, let's hear more <laughs> about you. Enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think of me? Um, <laughs> Am I pretty? <laughs> no. Anyway. Aww. So it's been uh, an interesting two weeks. So we covered uh, two weeks ago that we were uh, doing prep work on our house, getting ready to sell it. We listed and... Part of the reason for the absence was uh, trying to deal with uh, the real estate agents and everything that went along with that because our, our house sold in about a week. Yeah, that's about awesome. a week after we listed it, it was we got an offer. It isn't quite as high as we would have liked, but it was in the ballpark of what we wanted. So we figured, what the heck, and we jumped on it. Nice. Uh, yeah, so our house is. In the process of selling. So in the meantime, we um, <clears throat> did more packing and more packing and more preparations and trying to get stuff around to leave. Uh, we did have a little bit of downtime, though. We uh, ran a 5K this last weekend. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say we ran it. We walked a 5K. Participated in? Participated in, yes. That um, sounds better. <laughs> Leave it ambiguous. You don't know what we did. It was really exactly. fun, though. Um, we've talked on the podcast before. We did a color run, uh, what, a year or so ago. And that was fun. This one, though, was an inflatable 5K. So it was five a 5K fun run. You didn't have to run. It was walk. You know, there were no places. It was just for fun. But... Along the pathway, they had inflatable, kind of like the bounce house type things. Sure. So, you know, you would climb. It, it, it essentially became an inflatable obstacle course. There were, um, you know, things you had to climb over and go under, and there were steep inclines and slides, and it was a blast. I think this has been my favorite 5K so far. Cool. Cool. And in movie news, we went and saw Trainwreck. Okay. Was it a? Was it a? Uh, you know, it was a pretty decent movie. It looked this is like, like it had potential. Time. This was not the. This is not movie time. So, um, we went and saw Trainwreck. I believe we have spoken. I think we did a podcast after we went and saw Pixels. I believe we did. So we've already covered that one. Um, yeah, that's that's about the gist of it. Nice. Absolutely. Well, with that... Um... Uh, I have two PSAs. Uh, some of you have been noticing on your Blizzard launch that the Overwatch has shown up and that you can install it. You cannot... The beta for that has not begun. And secondly, I did download um, or upgrade to Win Windows 10. No, nothing from Brad. Congratulations. Welcome to the dark side. Yeah. Uh, well, considering <laughs> that every time I, I try to load up a game, I get like that 80s, 90s, 3D look distortion on my games. Nice. So is I couldn't record anything for the channel unless I wanted to deal with a massive headache. But did you I get it fixed. Yeah, I did, and that was okay, one of the, where I was going to go with is that uh, if you're looking, if that's happening to you, go into your uh, was it command uh, panel, um, open up uninstall programs. And only uninstall NVIDIA 3D drivers. That's ah. the only one you need to worry about. So I can tell you why this is happening? Ah, okay. Um, the short version is Windows 10 places a higher preference on drivers installed through Windows Update, which NVIDIA is one of them. However, NVIDIA has its own installer. And so essentially you get into this driver battle where Windows Update updates the driver. And then the NVIDIA updater looks at it and goes, no, that's not the right one, and updates the driver. 
And then Windows Update looks at it again and goes, wait, that's not what I did, and updates the driver again. And because the new Windows system, you can't turn off the auto updates. It will. You can delay them, but you can't stop cannot them. Disable them. Yes. yes. Um, because Windows 10. Because apparently Windows knows exactly what everybody wants and needs at all times. Yeah, Microsoft Psychic. Yeah. So um, apparently one size computer fits all, and that's just the way Microsoft sees it. In Welcome case you're future. wondering what that pain in the back of your head is when you. <laughs> Woke up the day after installing Windows 4. That was the chip that was implanted. <laughs> so, yeah, if you were having that problem with your games, go into your uninstall programs and delete the uh, NVIDIA 3D driver. And everything Correct. should be good. That's why I haven't been recording, because I didn't want to have to take three pills of ibuprofen every time I did. <laughs> Stupid ibuprofen. That's what Vicodin's for. <laughs> Sorry. That's what morphine's for. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, if we're going morphine, we might as well go Dilaudid and call it a day. That's what marijuana's for. <laughs> well, that's the easy solution. <laughs> <laughs> Very On good. On that note. Yep. Let's jump into some movies, shall we? If I can get set up over here. Oh. There it is. Look at that. It only took me a second. Um, two primary movies to talk about this week. We have Straight Outta Compton at 86%. This is rated R. In the mid-1980s, the streets of Compton, California, were some of the most dangerous in the country when five young men translated their experiences growing up into brutally honest music that rebelled against abuse of authority they gave an explosive voice to a silenced generation. Following the meteoric rise and fall of N.W.A., Straight Outta Compton tells the astonishing story of how these youngsters revolutionized music and pop culture forever. Uh, the moment they told the world the truth about life in the hood and ignited a culture war. And some of those individuals were Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Easy e MC Ren, and DJ Yella. Uh, actors in this are O'Shea Jackson Jr., Corey Hawkins, and Paul Giamatti, to name a few. Number two this week uh, of the two primaries. There are a few other things coming out, but um, a limited release. So we're only talking about these two. This one is The Man from Uncle, or U-N-C-L-E. Not sure what it stands for, but all the trailers are calling it Uncle, so we will too. Rated 69% at PG-13. A fresh take on the hugely popular 1960s TV series. Set against the backdrop of the early 1960s at the height of the Cold War, The Man from UNCLE centers on CIA agent Solo and KGB agent Kuryakin, forced to put aside long-standing long hostilities. The two team up on a joint mission to stop a mysterious international criminal organization which is bent on destabilizing the fragile balance of power through the proliferation of nuclear weapons and technology. Some of the names in this is Henry Cavill, or Cavill, who you may know as Superman, Hugh Grant, and Jared Harris. If you're not familiar with Jared Harris, he played Moriarty in the most recent um, Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movie. Now, in the box office this week, we have Mission Impossible Rogue Nation pulling in another $28.5 million. Fantastic Four pulls in $25.7, and its ratings have dropped down to 9%. The Gift pulls in $11.9 million, and Vacation pulls in $9 million. Cool. So, just for reference, uh, the interns came back with Uncle, Man from Uncle. Yes. It is an acronym that stands for United Network Command for Law and Enforcement. Aha, uh -huh. see? There you go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those interns, and we should we should pay them. You really should. I mean, we should, yes. Um we'll upgrade the rations today. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give them two slices of bread. Um apparently the original co-creator deliberately wanted to leave the meaning of Uncle ambiguous, so it could either be Uncle Sam, or given that the first two letters are U and N, uh, it could 
be ambiguous for the United Nations as well. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, and since we're on movies, tell us more about Trainwreck. Movies. Um, it's actually a fairly decent movie. I would recommend it. I think it would definitely be considered a chick flick. Um, but I am not ashamed to say that I was happy to see it. It was, I, I like the two main, uh, actors, uh, Bill Hader and Amy Schumer. Is that right? Uh, yes, I believe that to be correct. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they do a really good job. It is an interesting storyline. Um, I, I'm not going to go into too many details for those that still want to, you know, take the chance to go see it. Um, you know, it's a good, easy watching movie. Although there are some, are there are some moments where if you are emotionally inclined, they will probably stir your emotions. Um, but overall, a pretty good watch. Understood. Um. Are you typically a chick fic, chick fic, chick flick viewer? He flicks chicks. Not, Easy. Not typically. Um, I don't care much for the shallow, you know, easy sure. ones. There, there still needs to be a little bit of meat to the story. Did you ever see The Ugly Truth with Gerard Butler? That's hilarious. I did not. Your wife will probably get a kick out of it. It's it's a brilliant movie with uh, okay. Uh, Catherine Heigl is the counterpart. And Gerard Bartlow's not uh, not too shabby to look. Hey, at. well, you know, if you swing that way, buddy, that's fine. That's why you live in Indiana and not here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I don't swing that way, but I am uh, extremely secure and can admit when. No, I'm he's guy he's good. a great actor, and I I enjoy watching a lot of things that he does. But he's very very funny in this. Uh, and it's all kind of about the laws of attraction between male and female and where our focuses are. So it's it's pretty hilarious. Um, so, yeah, cool. if you get a chance with the missus, uh, give it a shot. Uh, in the movies also, trying to think here, with what's coming out, I don't foresee anything, um, any reviews on our end for next week. Uh, so we'll just kind of play it by ear. It's a little quiet from the big, for the big stuff right now. We're looking forward to, um, obviously, in November, quite a ways out, but Hunger Games, Star Wars in December. I feel like there's another couple in there, too, but we'll, we'll get to them when we get there. Definitely not Fantastic Four. Yeah, we're going to pass on that. Uh, now, see, I saw the trailer for it and thought it was at least interesting and worth a look. See, I saw the trailer for it and thought, really, the other ones aren't that old. Um, Sue Storm That's and Johnny no, Storm I, I are siblings. Why is one black and one white? He's adopted. And they <laughs> say that he's adopted. Um, well, they just seem okay, really young one, to play he, the roles for adopted. me. Even though, I mean, they're probably late 20s, early 30s or portrayed in the movie. This anyway. was like a checkmark box. It was like, okay, got to have that person here and that person here and that person. Okay. Well, I'm Rick curious to who owns the rights for Fantastic Fox. Four. Yeah, I want to take a look at that. Interns, get on it. Um, He's, we're, they're looking. But obviously with movies, because it's the same way with Spider-Man, um, that they keep putting out a Spider-Man movie every so often because Fox has the rights. I think it's Fox has the rights for Spider-Man. And if they don't do something with it, then Marvel will say, hey, you know, we want we want those rights back. Um, mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that this may be under the same same deal. But the interns are. And you know that, that whole sibling thing? There are plenty of cases where a mixed marriage produces children of different colors. Yeah, but not the polar extremes like this, typically. This is a Fox-owned deal. Um this was so just another... I, I think it was another, well, we got to retain our rights, so make another movie. Yeah. And by the way, 9%... And put a couple twists in yeah, on it, Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> didn't do great. Didn't do great in terms of uh, um, critic rating, but right, um, a... you know, 60, six, just shy of $65 million. I wonder what the budget was. Worldwide, that's... that's... 
Sorry um, for the clinking. Um, just got some ice water over here. So, production budget not available. <sighs> really? <laughs> not on the site I'm looking at. Interesting. Anyway. How wonderful. Okay, but it's only been out for five days. <laughs> yeah, it did just come out this week, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it still showed the saw the budget. Sometimes they don't uh, release it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. See if I can find it too. Budget 120 million. Okay, so they're yep. halfway there. So I mean, I think for a <laughs> lot of people, obviously the curiosity was there to see how it was. You know, if the critics were were off, or you know, they're just diehard sure. Fantastic Four fans, but. I think for from the masses, uh, it's not going to do nearly as well as the other Marvel stuff that's been out. No, well, like I've said before, I'm not a big Marvel fan. I'm I'm much more a DC fan. Um, yeah. But I thought the trailers were interesting, and I don't know if I will catch it in theater or if I'll wait until you know I like can HBO or Netflix. Sure. Or, but uh, now the box. kid <laughs> likes Fantastic Four. Um, she's watched some of the. She watched the first movie. Uh, Quite a few times, actually, and uh, fairly recently. So she may push to, to go see it, in which case I may drag myself to do so. Bite the bullet. But um, I make no promises. <laughs> All right. Um, let's move on to the news. All right. So you're going to get to earn your geek cred here. Or not. Or not. Be embarrassed. Um, this is actually a little bit older news. This is coming from my, uh, news archive. This is dating from, uh, I think it's the last week in July. So a couple weeks old, but still, I thought it was funny. Uh, the geeks in the crowd will get it. I will give a little explanation here. Um, so where do I start? At the beginning. Representatives of Universal Pictures have filed a... DCMA takedown notice with Google wanting them to remove um, pirated versions of Furious 7 and Jurassic World. Uh, okay. Um, okay, all right. So there's pirated versions available on the internet, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> uh, allegedly. Um, so the takedown notice is sent to Google to get the uh, websites removed from the index so people can't find them. Okay. Unfortunately, Unfortunately. The, people, the people handling the takedown notices for Universal aren't very smart or don't uh, pay a lot of attention to what they're doing because in the takedown notices, they included a demand for them to take down links to the web address 127.0.0.1. Now, the nerds in our audience are already laughing. For everybody else... Thank you. When you connect to the internet, your computer is given a unique address called an IP address. Correct. It's kind of like a phone number. That's how your computer is identified. Well, there are a couple of different numbers that are automatically assigned. 127.0.0.1 is one of those, and it's known as the local host. Essentially, it means me. <laughs> Break the some people's internet? No. What, what it is is when the person that was running the scan from inside Universal ran the scan, there was a copy of the movie on their computer, <laughs> the local host. <laughs> So they sent a takedown notice to Google to remove it from their from computer. their own locally stored <laughs> deal. Hey, I just want to let you know I have a pirated copy of this movie and I want you to take it down. Is what Please, they're saying. Yes. Just just reach in and take it off my That's hard drive. Now great. We can make fun of Universal here. They are not the only ones that have done this. NBC Universal has done it. iStudios has done it. Um there are plenty of others. Uh, Stanford Daily has done it. If you go to the website Chilling Effects, which is where Google stores all the complaints it receives, and do a search for 127.0.0.1, .0 .0 .1, 
you can see all the results of all the companies that have asked Google to remove themselves from the internet. That's, <laughs> that's funny. And here we have one of the main problems with the DCMA is I can allege that you're violating anything and the level of proof that I'm required to give is almost nil. Yeah, it's insignificant. We don't yeah, we don't require them to do their own fact checking before you know, sending all these takedown requests. There should be a fine attached to making false reports. Yeah, or stupid reports. There are stupid or questions stupid. and you should be penalized. Yeah, there should be a form of punishment for using the DMC system unjustly. You know what? My my feeling on this, Google should comply. <laughs> this is what the law says. They should totally comply. They should contact the uh, service provider of NBC and Universal and ask them to disconnect the companies from the internet, please. Even if it was just for like a day or an hour. You know, just... just Hey, you asked for this. this request. You, you've requested we do this. Um, go ahead and that's like, it, that's like that one meme where it's like, what if Google went down and we couldn't Google what happened? <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to use Bing. <gasps> oh. <laughs> You're sitting in the shower rocking back and forth, cold water hitting you. <laughs> Please make it stop. Please make rubbing. it stop. Please make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> so Please dirty. So Google. dirty. <laughs> I promise I will never ask for anything again. Just give me Google Just back. give Google back. Uh, it was too young. That's too funny. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, I'm just Googling my package. Wait, what? <laughs> that's not what I meant to say. Those quadcopter parts I was talking about earlier, looks like they should be here on yes. the 15th. So that's cool. Woohoo! That's only three days from when we're recording. That's right. That means I might actually have to Thanks. do something with him this weekend. Wahaha. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Universal doesn't want to be on the internet anymore. That's <laughs> awesome. That's that's what I heard. <laughs> that's what they're saying. And... <laughs> that's what they said. So, Wade? Uh, well, going on from one removal of announcement to a very large announcement, uh, at Gamescom, Blizzard re announced their... Next expansion for World of Warcraft, named Legion. This is just coming off the heels of Warlords of Draenor, where we will see the return of the de demonic force, the Burning Legion, and it's its largest invasion on Azeroth to date. Uh, this comes with multiple things, including what people have been asking for for a very long time. The Demon Hunter uh, Hero Class. And we will be able to wield artifact weapons that look surprisingly similar to some very legendary weapons. The Doom Hammer, which if not, in, not known is a very large hammer, will by Thrall. The Orc I prefer Shaman. The band hammer. What's that? I said I prefer the band hammer. Ah. <laughs> it's a good hammer. Uh, the ash. It is a good hammer. The Ashbringer, uh, wielded by um, Tyrion Fordring, and with with the announcement of these things, they these weapons is that. Wait, we're going to have artifact weapons, which means we won't be getting any weapon upgrades. Or any weapon drops in this expansion. So some be people are, are kind of questioning that. That weapon, you will not get an upgrade to your... Or you not be able to replace your weapon, but you, your weapon will be able to upgrade in power along your adventure in the upcoming expansion. Okay. Which is kind of nice. Is there a cost associated with this? Uh, you probably have to go through like raids and stuff and get certain pieces or kill certain. No, bosses. for the expansion. Yeah, for, for the expansion. It's usually, what sixty bucks? Mm, yeah, it's 50, plus your bucks. seventeen dollars a month Warcraft subscription. So it's essentially a full full 
game cost again. Mm-hmm. That's Blizzard's I way. Mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm pleading my ignorance here. I'm not a Warcraft fan. Um, haven't played it, so I, I don't know how no, this works. That is so a I'm correct just... statement, and typically it is Blizzard's history that every couple of years they're hurting for cash flow. They release a new World of Warcraft update at sixty bucks a pop, and they get people who played the last update for a little while to resubscribe and play it for another few months. See what's and, going on with it. Make some more money again and then fund the next one they do in the next couple of years. <laughs> it's pretty cyclical. I see. Kind of. That's fascinating. Kind of sad. A little bit. Well, you know, it's, I've been going using Google for, or Google Blizzard for a lot of this thing, but they're <laughs> like the only company that's actually doing something. You know, not really saying, oh, hey, we have a game. Here's a game trailer. You'll see it in five years, but yeah, I'm like I've I played it. I play while I will most likely be playing this expansion or this upcoming one anyway, and well, I might even put it on the channel if I feel like it. Okay, but I and I don't know their development cycle, but it seems to me that there's a lower barrier of entry to iterate on an existing product you know just add a few tweaks and re-release it then what you're talking about you know we won't actually see this game for five years when they're actually you know doing the development from the ground up yeah but you know we will be getting you know brand new uh a new land mass and be going a bit into the elvish lore rather than the orc and demonic i think that's what they're just going to go now is that they're I think they've kind of ran out of places to go or, well, ideas. So that they're just going to go over, like, with the next expansion, be like, uh, race after race after race. Just the ra- the race's lore. So, like, we had the so, the orcs for Warlord to join and then think now we're going to go into, like, the Night Elf kind of look. So is this set in Middle Earth? No. As in Tolkien? No. No. It is its oh, okay. own standalone universe, but that has orc um, classes, elf classes, dark elf classes, undead classes. Right here. Um, there's a pal- is there is paladin a type? Paladin really is, a, class? is a class, and the orc and human and gnome, dwarf, undead are races. Okay, so there you go. But, you know, uh, it's it's another expansion. We probably won't see it for about a year, but that's a lot better than what we get from other game companies. And I tried to play it, and I I, I just can't do it. Yep, and now that that <laughs> character is, like, <laughs> an alt. Yeah. And he, I just use him for professions. <laughs> so. Fine by me. Like, I'll definitely give oh, it a cool. shot, but... But you pay your, your money and play regularly anyway right yeah. you're not this isn't like something that you've been out of you're going to get back into you're you're consistent yeah i'm pretty much do it every day yeah this this is your go-to game that and hearthstone yeah okay i'll probably do overwatch when that comes out but you know who knows who's counting so um how do you guys feel about political correctness <laughs> moving on yes <laughs> I felt we were kind of done with that. <laughs> yeah, we're done later. Okay. Yes, no, No, I, I'm, I'm saying we're done with political correctness. Oh, well, um, we should be. I think, um, yeah, I think, therefore I am. Brilliant. You Good identify as political, politically correct? <laughs> uh, you know, I think we need to be mindful of what we say and how it affects others. I think there are cases where some people are just very sensitive. I agree. Or they're just looking for something to be outraged at. uh, Also true. There are definitely people that are looking to be outraged. I think we also, that we need to be mindful as well of how what we say can affect others and not be, I don't think we should go out of our way to be blatant, um, Shouldn't, shouldn't try to be insensitive, but shouldn't yes. have to 
walk, walk, on, walk on eggshells to make sure that we are overly sensitive. So apparently a group of individuals, I, I don't know, I say individuals, a, a group of people, I don't know the quantity here, complained to Target and said that um, we don't like how you've organized some of your projects based on gender and projects uh products sorry <laughs> um merchandise etc by gender and uh, want you to not do that and so target said okay um they're apparently going to cut down on gender-based signage uh, a lot some of these departments include toys uh home and entertainment so movies that are would typically or music typically can uh, marketed towards one gender or another will no longer be separated. They'll all be mm-hmm. intertwined. Music. Toys, apparently, all the toys, all the action figures will also be intermixed with dolls. All the so like Legos got the Friends and the Elves now series that are marketed more towards girls. That will all be in a centralized location. No longer be kind of partitioned this up based on gender. This aisles for what boys men like, and this aisles for what girls men like. Nope, it's just going to be a convoluted mess. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, Target and Target statement. They made it apparent that based on concerns from shoppers, that uh, gender classifications on products were unnecessary. They said, right now our team is working across the store to identify areas where we can phase out gender-based signage to help strike a better balance. Now, I like it. You like the non-gender specific? I do. Okay. And that's fine. Um, I think a lot of the gender specific um, labeling and signage has been ridiculous. I think it can be excessive, but I also think it it has a place. It can definitely be excessive. Well, okay. Why does it matter that I I had not heard of this until you brought it up? So I, you know, Googled it and looked it up on CNN. And the sign that they have there that is their example is there is an aisle with building sets, which I'm assuming is Lego. Sure. And it's all uh, the second sign under it is girls' building sets. Why does that matter? That's. Excessive. There's building sets. Who cares whether it's for boys and girls? I agree. I agree there in that example. There are boys that will be that will love to get, you know, the little pizzeria, and there there are girls that would love to get the Call of Duty themed tank. Who cares? I agree when the product is on the same, like, classification like that. Like okay. Um, you know, board games can all be in one area and that kind of stuff. But I think there's something like if I'm, maybe this is just, you know, my naivety here or preference, but if I think action figures and I want to go look at action figures, I don't necessarily need to see dolls. And I'm under the impression that the unification of products will put similar things like that together when they're not associated. Those looking for G.I. Joe aren't looking for an American Girl doll. Um, so Okay, but again, technically, they are the same thing. Uh, they are... And there are boys that like to play with Barbies, and there are girls that like to play with action figures. So who cares? I mean, that's true. I mean, it... They're, you're always, they're, okay, they, but they I are, guess... They are characters of some kind. Say that again? <clears throat> I said they are both characters of some kind. Sure. But, um, so away from my views and back to views of other shoppers. So this change, other shoppers are complaining this will make it harder to find some of the things they're looking for. And it kind of brought up the point that You know, uh, like you said, I mean, there's some things where it may make sense to uh, shuffle the cards, as it were, on gender-specific products. Um, But I'm wondering if, is it the minority that's causing the issue or the perceived issue? And 
our companies, in, in this case, Target, are they serving the minority at the expense of the majority? And, and what kind of aftermath is that going to cause? Because I don't know if I said this before, but some people are saying that they're just going to up and leave shopping at Target altogether. You know, I think that those people are the minority. Just my opinion. I have no stats to back that up. Um, from what I could gather, just quickly uh, reading over the article, it seems like they're doing this logically. There are some things like clothing that it makes sense to keep separate, and yeah, they're going to keep separate. You're not going to want separate. all your underwear, male, female, and otherwise, in the same area, obviously. There, there are different needs. Yes. You know? Um, so that doesn't make sense. So they're not going to do that. But where... Where keeping a gender difference doesn't make sense. Like, for instance, you know, Barbie and G.I. Joe. Why? What does it matter? They're both action figures of one kind or another. Put them sure. together. I'm pretty sure the boy or girl that wants to play with Barbie will find it in the aisle with action figures. You know? Yep. I so I, I think the reaction of... This being stupid, in my opinion, is the minority and is the overreaction. Um, yeah. <clears throat> you know, what does it matter if if what does it matter who wants to play with what toy? It's a toy. It's fun. Let them go at it. Who cares? Well, yeah. I mean, the whole thing for here is, is as a kid, they're not. You know, it's not going to phase them. They're going to find the thing and go, "Mommy, mommy, I want." You know, it's they're not going to be like, "Oh, well." I'm questioning myself because the G.I. Joe was next to the Barbie. You know, I'm, <laughs> they don't yeah, question the, that particular their form. That the gender thought. norms are social constructs that we as adults impose on children. Yeah, I mean, why do babies need blue and pink rooms? You know, the odd part about that, if you go back several decades, pink was considered a boy color. Isn't that interesting? And in fact, there are photos of one of our presidents, I don't remember which one, um, in a dress. Yes, Be because, because that's what they that wore up to a certain age. was considered appropriate for young kids, boys yes. or girls, it didn't matter. So, gender-specific um, toys, especially considering that's what we're talking about, are a social construct that we impose on children. They don't care. Yeah. They have different tastes. You know, I'm not saying all kids like G.I. Joe. Yeah, but, obviously. But, you know, within their taste, what does it matter what the what we as adults perceive as the gender norm? If they like to play with it, it's a toy. Let them play with it. Yeah, but and that's that's my take on the target target um, you know signage as well. It's it's a Lego set. It's a car. It's a action figure. I don't care who it was designed for or who was it was intended to be designed for. Yeah, marketed towards. And where I agree, where yeah. it says like it's you know it's pointless to have an ex it was the excessiveness was non issue, but you know to actually remove everything. You know, to a where it's like, oh, this is. How do, how do I say this easily? Just say I, you want to say it. It's kind of. I'm actually kind of hard to say it. Um, where it's just building sets, but to completely remove it is only show. Like I've, I went back to the saying that. You know, the kids won't won't realize where it is. You know, where it is, it won't affect them. On they just find it. You know. And in saying that, it wouldn't affect them if it was separated either. So really, this is actually just a lot of people getting upset over nothing. Yeah, what was the well, harm in the way that it was? Clearly, that bothered the, somebody. And enough people that complained loud enough for Target to and long enough. think maybe they needed to do something about it. The harm in the way it was, and this is not specifically Target, this is our gender norms in general, is that we have created this social construct that girls are less capable. And that's what it comes down to, honestly. That um, 
you know, they're not as tough. They're not as strong. They get the fancy dress-up stuff. They don't get the, you know, tough action figures. Sure. It, it, and this is this is something that we as adults create. Oh, I don't there necessarily are, argue with that. There, there's some interesting um, ad campaigns trying to bring awareness to this, that we as adults create this this perception that girls are less competent, that they're less capable, that they're inferior in some way. And the separating separating by gender where it's irrelevant just continues to play into that. So I think, you know, it's a small yeah. per, small perceived thing, but I think it's I think it's a good thing that it's corrected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I myself, I'm going to reserve final judgment until I see to what degree Target does sure. with it. Sure. Oh, yeah. You know, if they're, you know, they if they're doing it, it sensibly, <laughs> then fine. But if it's yeah. excessive and, and so uberly politically correct, then I'm going to have issues with it. Yeah, there's a chance they could make it worse. Yeah. But I, from what I've seen... It looks like they're taking a sensible approach. I guess we'll see. Yep. Time yeah, will tell. It's The thing is to say, I'm not going to say that women are incapable. As I've said before and I've said again, I work uh, with, uh, at, any, at one time, a particular, oh, this is when our shifts combine. Uh, when we get together, we just produce. It's me and another worker who is female. We both know where our strengths are and where our weaknesses are. Her strengths were my, where my weaknesses are and my strengths are where hers are. You know, by compatibility working together, we're able to, to make stuff. And that's how we produce for the company. So to say women aren't capable is complete BS. You just have to have the right people working in the environments to make the system work. Or to make the system flourish. Absolutely. But, you know, I, I to bring up an example, and I know we're going slightly tangential on this. but yes. um, <clears throat> We could go for hours upon days We could this. go for hours. I blame you, Garrett. You brought it up. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. I wear a little bracelet. You know those uh, <clears throat> elastomer bracelets, the Live Strong and yes. yeah, th- those kind of ones. So I wear one. It's orange, which is for... Multiple sclerosis awareness. Yes. And <clears throat> it is um, it is um, en- engraved isn't the right word, but it's got, you know, the etchings in it. Em- Fight like embossed? Girl. Yeah, embossed? I think embossed That'll is work. raised. Uh, but molded? Anyway, Let's just say molded. Yes. Molded into it are the words, fight like a girl. Now, usually that's used as an insult. Why? Uh, I agree. Have you ever actually fought with a really pissed off girl? Um, I, <laughs> I try not no, to. Cause... <laughs> no. No, but yeah. I, I do know how girls can fight, and it is uh, – there's no honor there. Yeah, well, <laughs> they do whatever needs doing in order to come out of that situation in, as which, best as possible. Which is the only way to fight. I mean, come on. <laughs> in, in, but 30 is possible. But not in question, and there was – I saw a video on this. In question is that if a girl, you know, starts beating up on a guy, you know, people will laugh at him. Like, ha ha, you're being beat up by a girl. But if a guy starts, you know, showing any aggression towards a woman, people jump on him. Yeah, now mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's whatever. You know, and... Because of that social cultural stigma. And, and if you th- if you hit a girl, you're... Boom! You you better be ready for three other people to be jumping down your throat. And, okay, but and, they should be doing that anyway. Exactly, regardless. but the, but then that's not and that's the issue there. You know, it's okay for the for a girl to be, you know, beating up on a guy, and, and some people even join in on the girl beating up the guy and laugh about it. But when it's the guy beating, you know, being even aggressive towards the girl. You know, it's it's com- that's completely wrong, and it's like, where does your equality come in there? <laughs> well, my point was, 
that um, we use this as an insult. You know? yeah. Yes, like, culturally like a it's girl used. Is, a, is an insult. Yes. And I feel like this is where this has come from. You know, we've we've belittled anything to do with girls. And it's time it stops. Why why is it any different? They want to play with something, let them play with it. Right. Yeah. You know, if they want to play with, this, with something, let them, you know. It do, yep. doesn't affect me at the end of the day. It doesn't affect Agreed. anyone at the end of the day. So, you know, it doesn't matter. But when you start bringing it into the real world where, you know, you, they get preferential treatment because of, you know, something, and then I have a problem. Yep. Anyway, um, we should all fight more like girls. And then they scream for equality when they get caught down. Sorry. I had to. Moving on. Yes. Before I strangle Wade. Oh. <laughs> Can I join in? Yes. All right. You'll be here. Oh, that's another announcement. Brad may be in town in a couple of weeks. Woo! Hey. Do so, a local anyway. podcast. What? We'll try and do a local podcast. <laughs> yes. This will be like will. the third or fourth attempt. <laughs> that has no a promises. history of not working out well. Uh, yeah. We promise to attempt. That's our yes. promise. That's about all we can promise. Yes. Moving on. Moving on. Um, where shall we go from here? Oh, uh, just pick one. Just pick one. <laughs> <laughs> pull pull it out of the like proverbial bing- hat. You need, you need to think of those like bingo cages. I like, a bunch of balls. Really just just grrr, reach in, pick grab one. one. Um, so, the uh, TSA, Transportation Security Administration, here in the United States of America, has a new chief. Woohoo! Oh, this Yay. actually affects me. Uh oh. Yeah. So, um, this is actually kind of funny. He's been on the job for about six weeks now. He was called before Congress to testify in front of the House Homeland Security Committee and said it was a huge concern that the agency had been doing a bunch of internal testing to verify their efficacy how well they do their job. And during undercover testing, it was realized that the agency's officers failed to identify bombs, weapons, and other security threats once or twice, right? Sure. No. How about 96% of the time? What? You had one job. 96%. Yes. So, what? Why are people being checked at the airport? <laughs> no idea. Uh, if you're not finding ninety six percent, clearly that four percent that you are finding is not the threat. And <laughs> I mean, nothing significant's happened on a plane in a few years now, right? Right. And if 96% of weapons, bombs, and otherwise are getting Being onto missed. the planes, mm-hmm. well, then what's so the So they're point? not actually getting onto the planes. These were undercover TSA agents conducting tests. Oh. But, in theory... Well, yeah. If they couldn't identify 96% in tests, then one can assume they're only catching 4% in actuality. Which brings me to one of my pet theories, such that it is, and that is the reason air travel has been safer, not perfect, but safer, has little to do with the TSA and more to do with the paradigm shift in the traveling public. That is, before September 11th, if your plane had been hijacked, you sat in your seat quietly, perhaps ordered a drink or two, and waited until the idiots up front landed at some obscure um, airstrip in the middle of nowhere, made some demands, 
the police came out, they got arrested or shot, or maybe they got their money and left and everybody went home. Sure. That was the way hijackings went. Uh huh. It was it was inconvenient. After September 11th, everything changed. Yeah, and it was no longer inconvenient. Now it's a legitimate danger. Now it's a danger and threatening my life. Well, since then, you'll notice that the underwear bomber got through security. The shoe bomber got through security. Who stopped them? It was the passengers on the plane. Why? Because when they said hijack... Everybody piled on. <laughs> they went, uh, yes. uh Jack. <laughs> so not, not today, happening. Jack. So, you know, it, my theory, and this kind of bears it out, is the TSA engages in what I, I call security theater. It looks good. It's a, it, They put on a good show. Yeah, it's peace it's, of mind. It's a song yeah. and dance. Yeah. For those that don't want to scratch too deep below the surface, it makes them feel good. Sure. But how effective are they? Well, apparently 4% of the time they might catch something, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but I can I guarantee work. you one thing. That unopened water bottle, they will find that every time. Every time. Oh, yeah. Every time. Your shampoo that's over four ounces? Oh, they've got this. Oh, yep. They're, they're, <clears throat> they're all over it. They have got this. You got some electrical equipment and um, sharp objects buried around in something? Eh, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Move along. Move you got along. some C4 in there? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Go ahead. Get on the pipe. That's <laughs> yeah. uh, absurd. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. What do you say to that? <laughs> I mean, you could go to the airport next time, but you're like, we're going to search you. Like, go for it. You're only successful 4% of the time. <laughs> then the TSA guy will look at you and you can pull up the article on your phone and be like, get out of my face, prick. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So, here's, here's, seeing as I travel regularly. Seeing right, as I work in an while, airport. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Here's some of the oddities. Okay. You're not allowed to bring sharp instruments. Nice. Doctors, you're screwed. Four okay. percent of the time. <laughs> well, okay, just by rules, <laughs> you're not allowed to bring a knife. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Statistics say I'm not going to get caught, but anyway, I'm not allowed to bring a knife on the plane. Yes. Okay? However, the rules do say that I am allowed to bring tools that are not knives. That are a total length of eight inches or less. So I could bring an eight inch straight edge screwdriver. Sure. You want to know what that does to the human temple? <laughs> okay. So, it does fun um, things to the brain. Do you remember mm, a couple of years ago? Uh, yeah, a couple of years ago. The uh, flight attendants union was up in arms. I mean, just wigged out because the TSA considered they threw out the idea of allowing box cutters on board again. Do you remember that? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, vaguely, yeah. yes. Okay, just, just lost it. That they've lost their way and oh my goodness, how could you you know, be this stupid? You know what is allowed on board? Exactly. Scissors. Right. Scissors. Scissors. <laughs> That from the hinge, uh, now I know this because every now and then I do have to take, you know, last minute emergency flights and I have to know what I can and can't take on board. Sure. You're allowed to take scissors that from the screw, you know, the pivot point. Yes. To the tip of the blade. I can't remember if that's eight inches or five inches. You take out that screw, you guess what you've got? Two uh, knives. Two knives. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. It's fine. There's just, it's for show. It's to make you feel better. It's to make people who don't know any better feel better, yes. Yes, and apparently only 4% of the time. <laughs> I always have this weird thought that someone's going to come to the airport and just start blasting with a gun. 
And now it's becoming all the more real. Mm-hmm. I'm more yeah. in. F- I'm more in favor of just body search. Oh, <laughs> you have oh well, not body search. Uh, body scan. Oh, you have a bomb. Oh, that, that, Blast that, that, glass that. comes up. <laughs> Flight five eight two seat. 9A is now open for standby passenger. <laughs> it's actually not a bad way. I mean, if he's planning to blow up an entire plane, clearly his life isn't important or hers. Um, so just... <laughs> Help them out here. Yeah. Take care of it when you can. That's funny. <sighs> awesome. Well, um... I think this is about as good a place as any to wrap it up, honestly. Mm-hmm. Agree? Disagree? Yep. I agree. Bam. Although, I do Test have it. several more articles. I know you do. Brad's going to start doing his own podcast <laughs> on leftover <laughs> news articles called Brad's News. Um, <laughs> Tech Talk with Brad. What you missed this week on an abundance of not. That's right. <laughs> Tech, um, <laughs> abundance of not after hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different show altogether. <laughs> we do thank you guys for listening and encourage you to head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash abundance dot not, or hit us up on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter at abundance not. Um, we are uh, more and more involved every day, it seems. Absolutely. And, uh, if you're lucky, you may get Garrett to flirt with you. That's right. <laughs> I might flirt with you. It's fine. Trigger warning. I, I don't ask too many questions either, so it's it's good. No, um, we do try to engage as much as possible, so uh, head on over, and uh, we hope to see you there. Thanks again for listening. Keep on gaming. That's a wrap.